I am a woman phenomenally. Phenomenal woman? That's me, Maya Angelou. Welcome to this segment of the Afrocentrist podcast, The Woman, Her Story, and Her Impact, where I get to speak to women from across the globe, sharing their stories and how they are impacting their world. Coming to you every Wednesday, 4 p.m. GST. Of course, with your favorite show host, The Energetic EJ. So, make it a date with me every Wednesday. The Afrocentris Podcast, proudly African. Hello, guys, and welcome to the Afrocentris Podcast. <laughs> okay, yes. I'm super excited. You know, I'm always excited to be here, right? This is the energetic AJ. Welcome to the segment, The Woman, Her Story, Her Impact, where I get to speak to women from across the world, sharing their stories and how they are impacting their world. And today I have a super duper special guest all the way from the US, WDC. Yes. Okay. We're getting closer. Maybe someday. We're going to sneak, no, maybe not sneak, strut into the White House. (laughs) Who knows? But we are on this journey and we are loving every bit of it. So today on the show, I have a special guest all the way from the U.S. And let me just read a short version of her bio. And then in the description of this episode, you're going to see her full bio. You can read up about her, follow her across her social media handles and connect with her, especially if you are a business person or a career person who is transitioning into the business world of entrepreneurship, okay? So you want to pay attention, okay? Let me just read her bio, and then you know what we do after that, right? We're going to get there. Today on the show, I have with me Faizun Kamal, who is an award-winning franchise coach nationally renowned public speaker and best-selling author. As CEO of the Franchise Pros, she leads a full-service franchise consulting and development firm. Faison coaches people nationwide on making the transition from employee to entrepreneur. Her best-selling book, The Right Franchise for You, Escape the 9 to 5, Generate Wealth and Live Life on Your Terms. I love that title, by the way. Is the guide that thousands of clients have used to find their perfect fit franchise. Forbes nominated this book for inclusion into their exclusive library for executives. Faizun also works with entrepreneurs to help turn their existing businesses into national franchise brands. That is super exciting. And we're here for that. We want to hear all about it. What birthed this idea? How did she come to this place? And how is she doing it, impacting her world? Okay, you know how we do it right about now. It's time for you to grab your cup of tea, your cup of coffee, or your bottle of water, if that is what works for you, as we sit in this chat to talk to Faizun Kamal. And I'll be right back with my guests. I am a woman phenomenally. Phenomenal woman? That's me. Maya Angelou. All right, guys. Boop, 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 boop. My guest is here. Look at how she looks so gorgeous. Like, seriously, I feel so blessed with all the gorgeous women that just graces the screen with me. Like, oof, so good. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Faison. How are you doing? Hi, EJ. It is lovely to be here with you, my friend. I'm good. How are you? I am awesome always. (laughs) Love it. Love it. Thank you so much for making our time out of your busy schedule to be here to share your story and especially how you are impacting your world. But before we go into the conversation of telling, you know, of listening to your story, how, you know, these franchise pros came about. I remember the first time I, you know, engaged with your content on LinkedIn. I'm like, I'm loving this idea of franchising your brand as a business owner or even as a brand. I'm like, hmm, this is interesting. This must be exciting. But of course, we know that no matter how exciting or interesting the thing is, there's always a story behind it. So we want to know about the story that got you to this point. But before we do that, let us just get to know you a little bit more. 
um, just by asking one or two trivia questions. All right, so. bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, I think this is the first, well, it's not a trivia question because I had a preview to this. Like I had no idea that she's like, uh, Faison here is like, uh, what would we call this now? Half sister in a way. <laughs> Because she had a childhood in Nigeria. She was in Nigeria. She grew up in Nigeria for like about 10 years. I mean, our formation years were in, was in Nigeria. So I'm interested to know, what is your favorite thing that you remember about Nigeria? Because I know you've been away from there for, I mean, over 30 years. But of course, you still do remember that you lived your formative years there. What was, your be what was, what was the best thing you remember or you, you love about Nigeria? Oh, my gosh. I'll say, EJ, it's, um, there's so many, there's so many. Ooh, that's but cool. Probably, absolutely. Um, two, I would say two memories. One, okay. every weekend, my family would, my dad would take us to Bar Beach. I remember that. Ah, okay. Oh, love so spending, it. spending the day, you know, Saturdays at the beach. The, that, that's number one. Number two, I'm a big foodie. Moi moi. Oh my God. I mean, to this day, to this day, my mother makes jollof rice with plantain. Ooh. She makes moi moi. I, I, <laughs> I eat little, uh, little meat pies. I can't make this up. The, the, the food is like nothing. You know, it's very funny that you bring this up as sort of your first question, EJ. I joke that people who know me know that I just look Asian. I'm actually half African, half Asian, you know, spending, spending my growing up in Nigeria. Right. And then after I graduated EJ, um, I lived and I worked in Kenya, Tanzania, Malawi. Whoa, sis, uh, you are one of yeah. us. Sorry. Yeah. We claim you. We you you claim us. We claim you. you. <laughs> and I'm married, by the way, I'm married to a man who's half South African, half Zimbabwean. So uh Listen, I think I have fully entered, you are Africa. right? No, you are, you are Africa. I'm African sister. You are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> that is so exciting. I love the foods that you mentioned. Moi, moi, jollof rice, plantain. Oh, oh, yes. oh my God. Oh, yeah. Any day, any day, man. I will sit down with that and devour it. Yes. Awesome yes. stuff. Awesome stuff. I mean, that already made my day. So I wouldn't bother you with any other trivia question. Like, I'm just going to bask in that. Okay. Oh, goodness me. Lovely, lovely, lovely to know that. Okay. Yeah. Now let's come back to you, Faizun, and your story. I mean, like I said, you know, I am fascinated by the idea behind your business. But I know that that came from somewhere. Like yeah. something must have inspired it. Can you share with us your story? Sure of how sure. the Franchise Pro came into reality. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. So again, first of all, thank you so much for spending some time here with me today. Uh, we were talking earlier before we got on about the power of technology in a world that is so chaotic right now. And yet we are still finding ways to be able to connect to the people that we want to. So I'm just delighted to, to be able to spend some time with you today. Um, how the fr franchise pros came about, EJ, is really, it sprung from, from a frustration, from an unmet need, from the sense of feeling like I was misplaced for many, many, many years in the various jobs that I have held. The work I was doing was great. I was traveling around the world. The end result for the end recipients was really good, but I never felt the spark. I never felt like that was work that was meant for me. It just never felt like my path. So there was always this misalignment. I was a misfit in whatever the position was. And I felt that I carried that with me for many years. And then in the very last iteration as an employee, I was in corporate America for about eight years. Um, it's, a, it's a Fortune 50 company. It's a global brand. It's a fantastic brand. It's a household name here in this country and globally. 
And the work again that I was doing was very good. But I would be lying to you if I said that it set my soul on fire. It never did. Never did. So one thing led to another. And I got laid off. Just like many, many colleagues had. And my friend, I tell you, when that happened, it wasn't just a blessing in disguise. It was a straight up blessing. Okay. That's how I felt. So then I'm in the space where I've gotten laid off for the first time in my life. Um, I'm type A. I always kind of know where I'm going. And so being an adult for the first time, not knowing where you're headed was a very disconcerting thing. I'd never gone through that. But that painful period, right, if you will, you know, we must go through, I used the phrase earlier with you, we must go through our 40 nights in the desert, whatever that means for each of us. And it was a particularly difficult time because what I made the decision to do was, I'm never going to go back into corporate. I will never be an employee. Um, I think I'm a terrible employee. I'm not cut out to be one. I am not. After, after eight years, come on, give yourself some credits. I, and I say that because my heart was not in that. My love was not in that. And I think mm-hmm. when you do work with love, when you show up with love, nobody can do it better than you can because you cannot replace that, right? So that's what I mean when I say, I don't think I was a great employee in that sense. Um, one thing led to another. And I, by accident almost, I fell into this world of franchises. And I took a step back. And Ajiro, you and I, we are both immigrants, my sister. And as immigrants, one of our driving forces in why we do what we do is what? I want the freedom to be able to live life on my terms, whatever those terms look like. And at that point in time, I most certainly was not living life on my terms. I was living life on my employer's terms. So I said, no more, no more. And as I looked at franchises, I was taken aback. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. People come to this country, the land of milk and honey, Immigrants from all over the planet flock to the United States because this is supposed to be the land of opportunities. For the first time, as I started looking at these different franchises, I said, oh, my God, this is true. There really is a way for you to be able to not be an employee, to take your gifts, whatever those are, and put it into a business that is yours. It becomes, it becomes a vehicle to be able to, and you know, you read the title of my book, by the way, those three things in the title, those are not my words. Those are the three things that at this point, hundreds of clients in their own words have said to me, the reason for why they're either looking at buying into a franchise or looking to turn their businesses into one. Escape the nine to five, generate real wealth, not, not, you know, not, an income that allows you to live in your retirement years comfortably, real wealth, wealth that can change the trajectory of your family and potentially generations of your family to come. And then lastly, but I think this is the most important piece, to be able to live life on their terms, right? These are the three things. I fell into it. I began, so the franchise pros began. It's going to be five years for us at the end of this month. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So it's a milestone. I know it's no, a milestone. You made it uh, halfway there. Woo! Halfway there. Halfway to a decade. Yes, indeed. No. <laughs> um, so, so, you know, as you, as you mentioned in the bio, we do these two things for people at Giro now. One, we help corporate executives, much like I was, to be able to say, okay, EJ, tell me what you're about. What do you like to do? What are your strengths? What are those things when you do them, you are in peak flow, like time, you lose all sense of time because you're just in your zone. What are those things? What do they look like for you? Because I want to know what they are. Conversely, what are your blind spots? What are your weaknesses? I want to know those as well. So I take clients through this very in-depth assessment, if you will, EJ. And based on what they're sharing with me, 
I then try to figure out what are the small handful of brands out there that hold the greatest probability of success for you. At this point in time, uh, we have developed here at the Franchise Pros a partnership with over 550 different franchise brands. Um, you know, you know, these are household names. You see them everywhere when you drive around. And so through this educational process that we take clients through, we then match them up with these brands that are in our inventory. That's the first part of the work we do. And then the client goes on to become a franchise owner within an established brand. The second piece of the work we do is, if you think of it, it's sort of on the other end of the spectrum. This is the work that we do with small business owners from any industry, any category. These are business owners who come to us, EJ, and they say, Faizun, I've put all my money into my business. I have depleted my savings. I have taken out loans. That's one. Two, all I do ever is work. I no longer seem to have time for my family. What was the point of this? That is the whole reason I started the business. But now I'm at a point, Faizun, where I still want to grow the business. And I feel like I'm kind of stuck. I've, I've hit a ceiling. These are the business owners, EJ, that we then bring on board. And we take them through a very specific process. And in the, it's typically a four-month process that we take them through. And at the end of four months, that business becomes a franchise. At that point, we take that business to market and we start selling the brand as a franchise. Um, we have so many examples of brands that we have taken to market. They started with zero locations, zero units in 18 months. They had well exceeded over 100 franchisees. This is not magic. There's a formula, there's a process, there are systems. You follow it and we can get you there. Um, and this is what we call franchise development. So at the pros, we do these two things for clients. So think of me as a, as a two-trick pony. Just These are the two things that we do for our clients. Wow. Okay, so my head is going. <laughs> <laughs> I hope in a good way. In a good way. Like my, 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 I'm, I'm, like, I'm, I'm excited in my, on my inside when, when um, this happens when I hear maybe a new idea or something, something fascinating like we 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 chill 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 slow down okay <laughs> I love it. so I love it. can you give us just like an example of you know a brand that you've worked with and you know what you, you know just like paint a picture for us so we so we can capture the Absolutely. whole idea behind the franchise Absolutely. yeah why don't i give you two examples awesome because you're you great to, oh, thank you. Thank you. As are you, darling. As are you. Um, two examples of two completely different businesses. To show you, to, to, to make a point that there are many people who think, who's listening to the podcast right now, who will be thinking, well, my business cannot be a franchise. And, I, and I, when, if, if you're sitting here listening to this and you're saying that, stop, stop because you don't know that for a fact. Um, the first example I'll give you. She runs, she's been running this business now for I would say at least five to seven years. She runs a vegan cupcakery, okay? This is her story. As her children were growing up, she realized that the kids were getting sick from the store bought desserts that she was buying for them. And long story short, ended up finding out that they had gluten issues, they had allergy issues, they all sorts of things. And she said, huh, if my kids are having that issue, I bet there are other mothers out there who are having the same exact issue. That's a void in the marketplace. How do I address that, right? This is, this is literally how every business on the planet is born, EJ, right? So she, the woman starts. She runs this amazing cupcakery. If you see the pictures, you will want to jump through the screen to grab one of them. No joke, okay? No joke. We've, we've been working with her for a couple of months now. 
It is a very specific need. You know, when you think of the food industry in franchising, huge, huge multi-billion dollar opportunity. You niche down, you look at the desserts, you look at that, that, that sort of specialty space. There are, to my knowledge, maybe, maybe one or two other vegan dessert options in the franchise industry. What that does, it sets her apart as a first mover. People will flock to her because there's nothing like her in that industry, right? So that's the first client. The second client, he came to us. He had been running his residential and commercial cleaning business for about the same time, five to seven to eight years. And he said, you know, we've done a lot of resident, we have a lot of residential customers and we've been doing well. He had a, he had a fleet of vans. Uh, he's local, by the way. I, I, I see one van at least every day when I'm driving around. It puts a smile on my face because I'm like, they're one of ours, right? And when he came to us, he said, you know, the pandemic is the perfect time for me to now turn this into a franchise. This is another lesson, EJ, right? Where if you are purposeful and intentional and you hold a longer term view, when most people are running away because they think everything is so shaky and uncertain, you jump right into it because you have the foresight to say, I know what's coming down the pike. I mean, I may not know all the details, none of us do, but at some point when the pandemic either decreases lessons or fully goes away, there's a void. I want to be there ready to fill that void when that happens. And that's exactly what he did. Can you imagine, you know, in the, in the day of COVID, in the age of COVID, hand washing, cleaning, if you're, if, you're a, if you're a commercial space, making sure that the space is clean and safe for your employees to come back in. If you're a home, you have elders, you have children, making sure that your space is as clean as it could be. These issues are at an all-time high. And I submit to you, even after the pandemic is nothing but a memory, certain habits that we have inculcated now, as far as cleanliness, is not going to go away. Absolutely. So I give you these two examples, right? To say, one's a product-based business, one's a service-based business. One is in the food industry, the other is in what we would call the home services industry. Completely different. But both of them are poised for, frankly, exponential growth when they become a franchise. So just, I give you that to say, just Yes, you're back now. Oh, what happened? <laughs> did, you didn't, did you, where did you lose me? I, 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 I said this to say, you were saying that you were putting, bringing it to conclusion when you said. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. So I would say, I, I made that point to say two completely different businesses, one in the product industry and one in the service industry. One is in food and the other is in home services. Yet, both of them are poised for exponential growth as they turn into franchise brands, which, which, is, which is one way for people to start to think about, regardless of what business they have in what industry, have a conversation with someone before you discount uh, the thought that your business may not, be, may not be right for franchising. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. You see, when you mentioned um, foresight and saying, um, you know, that even, even when all of this is over, there would be a gap and you want to be ready for that time. Yes. I felt so pained that I wasn't ready for my own gap in mm -hmm. 2020. Because, you know, when the idea of audiobooks came to me in 2015, 2014, 2015, it was, it was a projected idea, like, you know what, we'll work at this, become the biggest aggregate or aggregator of, of African audiobooks in yeah, five, right. 10 years. Mm. So that by the time the people, the market was ready for the virtual world, like when everything goes digital, we would be ready. 
So when mm. 2020 came, it hit me so hard. Like this was what you were meant to be prepared for, but I wasn't prepared. So it was so painful. Like, oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Well, I mean, the other thing too, EJ, I'm glad you feel the pain, not in a sadistic way. I'm glad you feel the pain because if the pain spurs you on to take action, then you didn't lose the lesson and you didn't really lose at all. Think about it, right? Absolutely. And so, okay, so now that you know this, and if you're sure that this is your path forward, what does that look like? Here we are. The first quarter of 22 has ended. Um, We live in a world that is for all intents and purposes, virtual, Mm -hmm. right? Though, you know, when we came on earlier, we talked about how incredible the power of connection is. Absolutely. That as humans, we feel the need to be connected to a person, a Mm. community, a Mm. tribe, Mm. an idea, what have you. Audiobooks, I will say to you, is yet another way for people to connect. Absolutely. Right? When you hear somebody reading the book to you, it's almost as though you're in a conversation with someone. I do a lot of audiobooks in my car when I'm driving, right? Um, It's a way for me to be able to read without reading because I'm so busy in in the other other parts of my life. So when I have dead time, when I'm driving, let me use that dead time wisely. So my friend, I think you are absolutely saying all the right things. So now what do you do, right? What does the next step look like for you? I think Mm. is really the question. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm just, I'm just loving this. <laughs> I'm loving this, of course. Yeah. So we're gonna have that conversation because, but you know, I, I just love when you, when you said it. You know, just to kind of have people start to think about their businesses now and looking at projecting into the future to say, okay, absolutely. not to discount whatever idea is coming to them now because now I'm oh. a firm believer that. Not at all that an idea comes to you now, even if it's not looking like, is this idea useful? Like, does it resonate with my immediate, you know, reality? Don't discard it. No. There is something coming. There is a reason that idea, like right now I know it. So I am not even joking at all. And that's why I'm not joking with this podcast. I'm not, for me, like I said, it's no longer just about podcasting because everybody's podcasting. No. This is more for me an assignment. This is more for me. Like it's, it's a must do like, because a lot of other persons are tied to this. So I'm not, so you, know what I, you know what it sounds to me like EJ, it sounds to me, my friend, that this may well be your calling. If you feel compelled there's something inside you that is pushing you to do this. You can't logically find reasons necessarily, but you feel compelled nonetheless. Pay attention. Those things don't happen accidentally. Nothing happens by coincidence or by accident. I've always believed in that. You know, we, we, these, you talked about it, the ideas, these sparks, where did they come from? Why did they come to you at just that right moment? Um, you don't meet people randomly. You meet people exactly when you need them and not one second sooner. I've always believed that. Always. There's no accident. This This is the craziness and the beauty of this life that we live. And if we can just be a little bit more mindful and not be so sort of, you know, I'm in my lane and I am, you know, this tunnel. Very myopic. Very myopic. Right. If you can stay, if you can keep yourself open to receiving what comes, it doesn't mean you're going to accept everything, yes. but it means at least that you're open to receiving. And then you make the determination as you always will. Yeah. What's meant for me and what's not. Yeah. But my friend, that suspicious sounds Absolutely. like a calling to me. <laughs> because the, the, the beauty again is what is meant for you will keep coming and coming again and coming again. Like, this is not leaving me. I want to leave it, but it's not going anywhere. That's a sign. You know, like, you know what I like, you know what I like to say? You just said it. I'll go a step further. <laughs> what is meant for me? Not only is it going to come to me, EJ, mountains will move so that those things come to me. 
And it is not, by the way, it is not your responsibility to move the mountains. But if it is meant for you, those mountains will move out of the way so that they do come to you. Now, your charge though, my charge, is when it does come, what now do we do with it? Do we set it aside? No, this isn't the right time. Do we say, nah, this isn't really what I was thinking about, set it aside? Now that is on you. But what's meant for you, what's meant for me? No, it is going to come. Oh, this yeah. is so good. Like, <laughs> oh, I feel so ticklish on my inside. Oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. I love I'm it. Good. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, Adrian, calm down. Okay. All right. So we, Don't calm down. I, it's all good. Calming down is overrated, my friend. <laughs> Okay, we are here for the franchise pros, okay? <laughs> okay. Wow, amazing. I, I feel, you know, I, I, I can literally sense, you know, that connection of, you know, how connected you are to what you do. Like, you know it. And, and it's, it's, there is this, it, there's a vibration. It gives, like, there's a, there's a feeling that comes in when you say what you do. How and you, you know, and you know and, what that is, you know, right? Yeah. It's love, EJ. Oh. I love what I do. I am honored to serve the clients that come to us. By the way, no client is an accident. They were meant for us and we were meant for them. So nobody could take that away. They could go to a hundred other places and then we would be the hundred and first. And <laughs> they would say, ah, ah, I have found what I'm looking for. So good. I, I, I believe in this so strongly. It's not even funny. So good. It's love. It's love. I love what I do because for so many years, I did not. And that weighs on me. So now that I finally found what I believe is my calling. Nothing. better gone. believe. Nothing. That's what you think. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so good. So good. I mean, just in this short time of conversation, I have heard your story of moving from this level of dissatisfaction, even though, I mean, yes, the story is common to all of us. Like, oh, at some point in your life, you're going to get to that point where you know, no, this is not me. There is more to me than this, right? But I love that you have transcended beyond that place of discomfort to get into the place of love to do that thing which you feel so convicted about. And like, there is no shaking it off. When you are it, no. you are it. When you no. get it, you get it. When it is right. it, it, it is. It, um, it infuses you. When this is what you think about, you live, you breathe, you take in, you think about this all the time, you're onto something. When you feel that way about something, you know you're on to something. And this is what I mean when I say, when it comes to you, don't discount it, don't ignore it. Pay attention to it. It may or may not be, but it is your charge. It is my charge to be able to say, is it? Is it? Yeah. Awesome. Wow. Guys, like I'm sure like I could sit right here with Pfizer and, and we would just bore. Like if I... Like, <laughs> <laughs> we most certainly would we most certainly would yeah this is we, we're vibing my friend we have since the moment we got on i know exactly <laughs> <laughs> i love that. i love oh, your energy oh thank you so much i love yours and i just like i could just feel it i can feel it i can feel it it's so beautiful it's it is beautiful and i agree with you that it is love um only love has that power to break yeah. whatever what whatever kind of barrier only love can go through. I mean, breaking ceilings, shattering glasses, <laughs> going through technology and still That's touching right. uh, is That's beautiful. Right. I really, yeah. I really do hope you listening right now or you watching right now can feel this love and feel it and if there is one thing i'm going to plug in here before i ask Faizu to just kind of wrap up and share you know just one message for a woman who's watching this or even a man 
you know, and thinking about, oh, transitioning and then, uh, or you're already in business and you're not sure, oh, like, okay, you've been doing this for years. You want to scale thinking about franchising. What I will plug in here is, like Faison already said, whatever you find yourself doing out of love, do not discount it. Do not, do not let it go. Sometimes it's going to be tough. Like you mentioned something like, it's going to be illogical sometimes. Like, I don't get it. Why are you doing this? But you can't explain it. But for some reason, you have the strength, even when you are at your weakest You still have the strength to do it, even when you are at the rock bottom stage. When it comes to this thing, there is just this energy that comes to you that makes you do it. Don't let go. Don't give up. I know things could be tough. I know challenges could be there. They are always there anyways. But please hold on. Help is on the way. Keep going. Keep doing what you love to do eventually is going to make sense. Okay. I hope that you are encouraged by that. Faison, I'm going to ask you this, like in, in rounding up the session is to say for somebody already, like, I hope they are feeling this energy that I am feeling. And they're thinking, what's the process like for me to, you know, contact you and say, okay, take me to the first step just to kind of evaluate if my Absolutely. kind of business or my idea is franchisable. <laughs> yes, <laughs> what that's do they right. Do? That is the word. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. Um, I would say EJ. The first thing uh, they can uh, go to our website. It's the franchise pros. One word: the franchise pros dot net. Um, there is a wide variety of resources on the website. It takes somebody through, is their business franchisable? Is this something that makes sense for them to do? Um, It also has videos of past workshops I have done for different partner organizations. And uh, I think that'll start to give people a little more of a deeper insight into, does this make sense for me? Uh, Because what we've talked about is pretty high level here today. Uh, That just gives them another layer to look at. So absolutely, they can do that. Uh, There's contact information on the website. And as you and I, uh, we've connected on LinkedIn. So I I live on LinkedIn. Uh, Happy to connect with people there as well. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And I I mean, it's just been a pleasure. Like, (laughs) I'm happy. I'm happy we had to do this. I'm happy, um, you know, see uh, connecting with you on this level, connecting with you on LinkedIn and just having this conversation. You... You've got, you've got a, you've got a, you've got a great vibe around you, girl. So, <laughs> <laughs> my Nigerian sister. Okay, I, maybe that's we, what sets the tone, right? I think so. I think so. It takes one to know one, as they say. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> awesome. So, guys, please do connect with Faison. I'm going to leave the details of the website on the description of this video, as well as on the description of the audio so that you can go. I love, 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 love that you have taken out time to just have those resources there to qualify the people that are going to reach out to you. Say, okay, is this for me? Is this not? And then if they want to take it further, then they can contact you and, you know, do, you know, take it to the next level. And I think that's a lesson right there, right? SMEs, business owners, pay attention. When you visit that website, Pay attention. <laughs> See something that you can get inspired by yeah. and model something after that, like your business, your website. Learn everywhere you turn to just start learning, okay? <laughs> we have the permission to do that, right, Faison? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. We do indeed. Always learning. Always learning. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I've had such a great time with you today, Faison. Absolutely. I don't know. Like, uh, I just... I, it's, I know it's early, but I love you, okay? And it's early, but oh. I, I love you. I love you. I, I, yeah, I vibe with you. Oh. Thank you so oh. much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you so thank much you. for being here. Um, guys, until I come your way again next week with another beautiful, gorgeous woman sharing her story. I know, you know, Faison today shared her business story. And at the end of the day, um, that's the point really wanted to know about 
the franchise bro this is how she's impacting her world and i really hope you're going to check it out do check it out and see if your business or your brand is franchise able and take that conversation on with her and see how or where that leads you okay so until i come away again next week remember that you can you know subscribe to our youtube channel please if you haven't done that yet share this link with somebody who you know has a brand that could actually be franchise able let them get in contact with faizun on linkedin i mean she's really really a sweetheart you can see it already here so you can always <laughs> slide into her dm on linkedin and get that conversation going at least go know go find out if this is something that you want to look into all right and then also check out her book okay we're going to leave all of those links in the description below as well you can support the work that we do here at the afrocentrist podcast by buying us a cup of coffee for as low as five dollars just click on the link in the description of this video to buy us a coffee and drop a beautiful note if you will and then we're going to read your notes on the next episode okay thank you thank you thank you so much for being here i love you guys i'm rooting for you remember to keep learning keep growing and keep living this is the energetic ej saying bye-bye bye take care <laughs>